my name is Sophie Swan. Thank you for joining this Saturday morning. Um, I'm having a solo exhibit at Sorrell Gallery in the town of Westport, Connecticut. And I'm going to give you a brief a walkthrough of my works, followed by a Q&A. So the paintings that I have up at this show are from various stages of my work in the last few years. Some of them are really current, some of them are maybe two, three, two or three years old. And um, just walking through them briefly, um, I'm a contemporary painter, as you can see. I focus a lot on repetitive elements in my paintings. Um, I find that repetition, for me at least, is quite soothing. And I use a variety of colors. Um, painter. I don't really paint what I see, but it's more about painting what I feel. And these come from my life experiences and my memories and my emotional responses uh, to those experiences and memories. The house is my signature. Um, I like to hide it in a lot of my paintings. Um, sometimes it's featured, like in this one. With that, I would like to start, you sort of got into a little bit of this, um, but I guess the best place to start is just with your background. Um, so, uh, and then I think it'll be a good lead in to get into sort of the theme of the whole show. Why don't we first talk about just where are you from, where are you located now, um, and how did you get to where you are now? So um, I was actually born and raised in, uh, in Iran. Uh, I spent my childhood and youth in that country before I immigrated to the US. Um, and I kind of had a somewhat nomadic life. Um, I moved to the US, landed in California, um, and then moved back to the East Coast to go to college. From college, I I stayed in the East Coast in Boston for quite a number of years and then spent a few years in Paris, France before returning and coming back to the U.S. And it wasn't until later in life that um, I felt that I had enough sort of experiences that I really wanted to get out on campus. Um, when I was in Boston, I took courses at the School of the Museum of Fine Arts, and I dabbled in, you know, different styles, portraits, landscapes, whatever, but none of them really felt true to me at the time. I just didn't feel like I was putting out what I was feeling. I was trying to paint what I was seeing, and it just didn't feel right for me. Um, it wasn't until I returned to the U.S. after my stay in France that I, you know, started really painting and all those internalized feelings and memories and emotions started pouring out. And that's sort of how I really found my voice and felt that what I was painting at that time was what felt right to me. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, the so, show is called Finding Home. So, and I know you were starting to talk about the houses that you've put in your paintings. Um, can you elaborate a little bit about sort of how your background, um, starting out in Iran and then moving to the United States, how does that inform your this body of work that we're looking at now? So the house is really symbolic uh, for me, you know, as an immigrant. Um, it took many years to sort of get over that feeling of destabilization that you get when you're forced to leave your homeland. And I was sort of living in between these two worlds. Um, and it took quite a number of years for me to sort of assimilate and find a new home, which is where I am in, in Connecticut. Um, and the representation of the house is really my way of find, finding that sort of foundation and stability. And yes, I do hide it um, in paintings, and sometimes it's sort of like a fun game people like to play, try to 
find where the house is because it's never in the same place in any painting. It's obviously always a different color. Um, I can show you some examples. For example, even for myself, sometimes I have to look where I put it. Here's the house, for example, in this painting. Um. <laughs> so from a more technical standpoint, I guess, since we sort of got a little bit into the details of each painting, how would you go from start, from very, very start to very, very finish on an individual piece? So um, I don't sketch at all. I, and that's really intentional. Um, it helps my spontaneity. And uh, the, the place that I start is really my, my mind, um, my memories, my life experience. Um, you know, life experiences and memories have a, have a way of um, really intruding in your daily life, or at least in mine. And, uh, you know, when they're very significant, uh, they sort of fuel your creativity. So, you know, I, I think about something or something pops into my head. And I, you know, sort of expand on that, on that thought and that feeling and then I reach out for colors that I feel um, sort of give meaning, to, give meaning to the story I'm about to tell. And, and then I just start applying the colors. And at some point in the process, it, it, it loses being intentional, if you know what I mean. So while in the beginning, yes, I'm reaching out for a certain color, eventually it gets to the point where I'm just reaching for colors without really even thinking about it because what's going on in my head is really the conversation that I'm having and the story that's unraveling in my head, which I want to put into cam on the canvas. You see a lot of these re re uh, repetitive elements. It's actually, in a way, um, a code. Um, it's like kind of like a language. And I'm telling my story, and it's like my story on campus. So in this way, a lot of my works are really autobiographical. Um, because each one represents, um, is, is a window to some part of my life and my life experience. Right. You tend to use acrylic paint across the board, but you also use a very cool mixed, mixed media. There's a special ingredient in there. Um, and you use Persian tea in your paintings. So, so I would love to know um, many different things about why you use it and, and what does it do. Um, I guess number one is how, do you, how did you start using Persian tea? What, is there any meaning behind that um, as, you know, in conjunction with color maybe or maybe just on its own there might be symbolism there? Um, and then what do you think it does for your paintings? What do you think the end result is with that? sort of inclusion? So at the big beginning, when I, when I really, you know, when I started and found my internal voice and I started painting, you know, one of the things that I always went through my head was, you know, I, I am American, but I'm also Iranian. And, you know, how do I, how do I put my Iranian uh, background in this work? Because that's an important part of my life. And, you know, there are a lot of Iranian artists who do it very directly. They'll do miniature work or they'll use, you know, um, Iranian symbolic writing, something that's very, very direct. But I didn't want it to be that direct because that wasn't me either, because, I'm, you know, I'm, I have these two cultures that are really blended into me. So um, I started experimenting with sort of staining and, and the kind of effects that that would have. And I was really drawn to, to Persian tea. Um, I find that it just has this really nice, subtle sort of um, sepia tone, which can vary depending on what kind of wash you put over it. And I use it um, liberally, and a lot of the paintings, I'll use it in the beginning of the process just to put my mark down. And you may never see it at the end, in the end result. Um, mm. I think like this is a really good example of the stain that, that this version T gives. Um, it's a little difficult to apply because when you first put it on, you know, you can barely see it. So it requires a lot of patience and time in terms of just keep applying it and applying it and applying it. And eventually um, the canvas really starts to absorb it and you can see it. So do you feel at this point, you've got this like beautiful body of work where you're kind of always going back to that, like I'm, I've been looking for home and I struggled with where my home is. And so my next question was going to be, do you feel that you found that? And it sounds like that piece that we were just looking at the Wobble House is, is sort of that big, that bigger 
you know, house that has more gravity than any of your others have, and you you have. So, well, this the house of wobbles took shape. I think it was two or three years ago. Um, but you know, I, I think that one of the things about being an immigrant is that um, even though you assimilate assimilate yourself into a new culture and you have a new identity, as I do, you're always going to have that one piece of you um, that you feel you've lost, um, and that's that's just. Just as the way it is. There's nothing I can do to change that. It's going to be something that I carry with me always. Um, so I'll always have those memories and I'll always have the yearning for the homeland, even though right now my homeland nowhere near represents um, what I what it was, you know, when I was a child and, and during my youth. Um, so it's really all my memories of my homeland are purely nostalgic. Uh, but in terms of finding home, yes, you know, I, I have sort of found home, but there's always going to be that that loss. The house is everywhere, um, but there's there's one section of this where you know there's an empty square, and it's uh, it says "vide" or uh, "empty," um, "vide" in French or "empty" in English, and and that's what that really means. It's just there's just going to be that one part of you that's always going to be missing home. My next question is, you have all of these, um, this meaning that you put into each of your paintings, there's so much symbolism there. And it's really personal symbolism. So it's like this, you know, it's a it's a conversation you've had with um, someone in the past, it's about finding a, a, a place that you call home. What is your goal for a viewer looking at one of your pieces? Or is it just maybe there there is no goal other than this sort of exploration for that you've that you had during the creative process, but um, yeah, what what does what is the the goal for the people looking at your work? I mean, personally, I'm always going to paint um, what has been my life experience. Sometimes these are just things that I pull from my memories. Sometimes it's it's like you know a conversation I wish I had with someone. You know, so it could be man imaginary, so it's real or imagined, but it is my life story. Um, of course, for a viewer, you know, how would they, how would they know that? Of course, they, they, they wouldn't know what the exact story behind a painting is. Um, but what, what I would want for a viewer is to look at a painting and, you know, find their own story with it. And perhaps there's something in, in the colors, maybe the title, you know, the movement, something that resonates with them so they can find their own sort of story behind it. I think. Um, no. What is some advice you would give to your younger self, whether that's your younger self as an artist, as just an individual, or both? Um, I think the best advice that I would give to myself as a younger self would just be just, so, you know, go with the flow. I mean, you know, Life is a way of throwing things at you and things happen in your life and the best you can do is sort of um, go with the flow and not worry so much because there's certain things you can't control. And I certainly couldn't control many things that have happened in my life. And um, you know, at the time I thought I could and I think that just caused some stress. But it's, it's really a, a matter of just letting go and really letting yourself Feel those experiences at the time that they're happening. Feel it, let it pass through you, and internalize it so that then you can um, put it out in whatever creative way that it is. And you know, for me, that turned out to be painting. Um, for others, it's, it's something else. Yeah. Thank you, Sophie, so much for doing this. It's a little bit different than we've done in the past. Very often when we, oh, someone just said they're saving up for their first piece. That's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, in the past, a lot of times we've done this um, just with, you know, doing an, sort of an inside the studio look where we look at someone's studio. This is the first time we've really done um, a Q&A session with an artist in, a, in a, a solo exhibition where they're actually able to walk around and give specific examples of work in Sorel. So um, this was really different and interesting and unique. And it was really great to talk to you because you have so much, there's so much to your work that is not obvious. Um, and so I think it really gives so much depth to hear more. So, um, so thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank